Hi again. I'd like to continue the discussion of the alert controller. And in the last video, we had created an alert view. And I'll show it here. Um, so I click this button and my alert view shows up. And it's got the name and the message. And then it has a, a text field here that you can type in. And then it's got a cancel and an OK button. So at this stage, now that we've got the alert working pretty well, what we want to do is we'd like to get the value out of the text field, okay? So uh, so how do we get the value out of the text field? And, you know, we want to do more with this, but for right now, let's just get the value and then put it up here in the name field, okay? So I'm going to click OK there. Close that and stop this. And... Uh, <clears throat> Here's my um, my function that displays the alert, okay? And we create the alert controller here, and then we make a cancel action and an OK action, and then we added a text field, okay? So what we want to do is we want to get the value from the text field when you tap the OK button, okay? So when the OK action occurs, we want to grab the value that you typed into the text field, okay? So to do that, we're going to use the handler here, okay? And the, um, the alert action has a handler, and the handler is a block, which is sort of an anonymous function. It's like a function that we're, we write in line rather than a part by itself. And, uh, you know, that block of code will run when, you know, this alert action takes place. In other words, you tap the, the, or, or the, uh, the OK action takes place. So when you tap the OK button, then this block is going to run. So to write a block, use the curly braces. And a block, if it receives a parameter, you'll put it in parentheses, okay? And if it returns a value, you'll follow the parentheses with the arrow and the type that it's going to return. If it doesn't return anything, you can just put void. And then you'll say in. And then after in is going to come the code for this block. So you could say print line or something, right? And you can put as many lines as you want in there. You can actually add a line return here like this. Okay. So so here we're going to receive a parameter, and this, you know, it's, you have to look it up in the documentation, but this function, this UI alert function, returns a, um, a reference to the action that just occurred. So we'll just put a variable in here called action, and we'll receive that. And then it doesn't, it doesn't return any values, like this function won't return any values, so we'll leave that as void, right? So... Now in here, what I want to do is I want to talk to the alert that we've created. <clears throat> and I want to get the text field from it, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say like, hey, if, um, let, and we'll need a variable to hold the text field because there's a text field somewhere inside this alert. We just don't know where it is, right? So we're going to ask the alert for it. And I'm using if let because this is going to be an optional because, you know, there might not be a text field there. And if there isn't, it's going to return nil. Okay, so I'm going to say if let. So this is saying, you know, like, hey, you know, if the, something is there, then we'll, we'll put it in this variable that we define after let. Okay, so we'll call this variable text field. So I'm going to say, hey, if let text field equals alert dot text fields right? And the text fields property in alert or in the alert controller is an array. And we can tell it's an array because this has the square brackets. And then it says any object. So it might have any object in there. We know it's going to be a text field, but the computer doesn't know, right? And then it's got a question mark because it's optional. Like it might, you know, there might be something there. Or there might not be, okay? So, uh, so I'm going to say alert text fields. And then since this is an array, you know, we can get at the, you know, the first item or, you know, we can also just say um, first and that'll give us the first one. And then, you know, um, Xcode put in this little question mark here because this is an optional. So we're going to we're going to put that in there to unwrap it or, you know, get the get the value. Right. 
And so there we go, right? So now I've got, you know, alert. And if, you know, if there is a text field in here, this will give me the first text field, right? So if there's text fields exists inside alert, then this will give me the first item in that array. And then it'll be in this, um, this text field variable here, right? And I'm getting a warning here. And I think this is because it doesn't, it doesn't get the type there. So it says like, oh, you know, explicit annotation meaning blah, 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 right? So you'll notice like when I click on this, it wants to say, you know, any object right here because that's the type that's stored in this array. But, but actually, you know, what we want is we want a text field. So I'm going to say UI text field here, okay? And then it's going to still not like that. And it's going to say like, hey, you know what? This array only contains you know, any object type objects, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say as UI text field. Let's see if that ha made it happy. Yeah, I guess it did. So, so here we're just kind of confirming for the compiler that, you know what, this variable is going to be a UI text field is the type of value that's stored in it. And then we're saying like, hey, you know, when we grab the value from this array, you know, it should be type UI text field, even though the array doesn't know what types are in there. It's just any object, which is a generic type, right? So anyway, now that we've got our text field, we can do something with it. So, you know, um, let's do a quick test here. So if we want to put the value into the city name label, right, what we can do is we can say, self dot city name label dot text equals text field dot text okay and inside the block here we need to use the self reference to access variables that belong to this class without that um, it will look for the city name label inside here in the block and won't find it so we have to use the self there right see it's going to give me a warning here it's going to say like hey or it's going to be an error right it says like hey this is not good it'll even say like insert self right so uh so we need to do that and anyway let's give it a test so we'll uh we'll click run and here we are right? And so it says Paris right now, but really I want the weather for Berlin, right? So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to type in Berlin and then I'll click OK and it says Berlin, right? And if I, you know, because it's running this block of code right here, so it, you know, it runs the handler when we click the OK action and it gets the text field from the alert text fields array if there is one. And we're using if let here because if there isn't one, then they'll skip over this if statement, right? And if there is one, then we're going to get the text property of the text field, which is the text that you typed into it. And we're going to put it into the city name label text, and it displays here. And if we, uh, if we test that again, if I click and I type in, you know, Madrid, and I click cancel, right, then it doesn't change anything because in that case, we ran the cancel action by clicking the cancel button, right? And so there's no handler there. If, the, if we wanted to do something with that, then we could put a handler here also like we did with the OK action, okay? So anyway, there you go. There's how we're going to get the text out of the, um, the alert box, okay?